The standard and extended ACLs we've worked with in this section fit the bill perfectly in many situations, but they are kind of hardcore as to permitting and denying. You know, there's no gray area. And some parts of us, of course, as network admins, we like that. But sometimes you need an ACL to just be applied at certain times of the day, maybe certain days of the week, maybe the weekend. And we really don't want to try to set our phones and remember, okay, I got to go configure an ACL at a certain time and then I got to take it off at a certain time. That's kind of crazy because we got things we got to get done. There's also another kind of ACL here that we saw in iOS help occasionally and the config of it is way beyond the scope of the exam. We got to stop somewhere. So I, I do want to show you though the overall operation of a dynamic ACL because we saw that a lot when we were looking at iOS options, there'd be permit deny and then remark and then dynamic on some routers. Let's look at this. It's, um, it allows you to create a dynamic extended access list. It's commonly referred to as lock and key. And the reason is that this is kind of like giving someone a key to the lock on your front door. And when they leave, or it's time to ask them to leave or to help them leave, uh, you know, you lock the door right behind them. Because what happens is with a dynamic ACL, when you use it for Telnet, the Telnet users will be able to authenticate as usual, but this access to whatever destination they want to get to, it's temporary. And we tell them that, you know, when they come in, it's like, okay, uh, here's your Telnet attempt coming in and you authenticate, the router would authenticate the user as normal, but then it creates an entry in the dynamic ACL that allows that particular host access to networks that you and I as the network admins have defined. Now the natural question is, how long does the remote host have access to that network? Do you know, they need to be typing really fast? What do they need to do? Well, this is up to us as the network admins, and there are two different kinds of timeouts we can set. One of them is the absolute timeout, where the remote host has X minutes of access, and that's it. You know, that's like no matter if they, uh, if our house guest is in the middle of a story or in the middle of making a long distance phone call, whatever, just, you know, they're going out the door in 25 minutes or however minutes we set it to, and that is it. Now there's the idle timeout, which you could compare to a house guest that you're kind of enjoying having over, but sooner or later the conversation really starts dragging. Well, that's an idle timeout when no data is being exchanged for so many minutes and it looks like the visit really needs to be ended then the router will end it. So that's two handy ways to further secure Telnet access. And here's one that you can use for beyond Telnet, but it also allows you to set the time of day and or the days of the week that an ACL is going to be active. Time-based ACLs can be set to deny and permit on the basis of time. And to write one of these, you first define the times the ACL will be applied. And while I think we saw the time range command once at the very end of a long ACL line, there wasn't anything with actually, about actually creating it. It just said time range and then name of the time range. Well, you don't create the time range as part of the ACL itself. What you do is actually use the time range command to make that happen. So here's time range, and think about giving an intuitive name. If it's weekend blocking, you know, just call it weekends or something like that. And I'm going to call this one Tuesday night because we're going to block traffic on Tuesday night for a certain time range. And let's see, now we've got our time range command. We're in time range config mode. Let's go ahead and check out our options. We've got absolute, which is absolute time and data course. This is for when you perhaps just want to do this one time, but you're saying, okay, on January 6th at 2 p.m., I want this ACL to last until January 10th at this time. It's not for a days of the week selection, like something you're going to run every week. It's something you're going to run one time. And to see the options, which are exactly what you would think they would be, you got an end time and you got a start time, and that's it. Now let's check out the periodic options. So we've got our periodic options and you see that every single day of the week is listed. There's also an option at the bottom for daily. So if you're running, going to run this every day, you don't have to type Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Then you've got weekdays, which is Monday through Friday. And then finally weekend, which is exactly what you'd expect. It's Saturday and Sunday. So if we just wanted to run this on Tuesday night, 
we could just put Tuesday. And if you want to run it on multiple days that you can't cover with the daily weekdays or weekend option, let's say you want to do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you could type all three days, just Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whatever you wanted. Now, starting time, we're going to start it at 1900 hours, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then two, and you can see the hours and the minutes, etc. And we're just going to end that four hours later. Please note, I don't think there's this, there, this argument is long gone, but there used to be, I kid you not, a big argument online, I think among IE candidates who are freaking out about the trivia of every little command. You know, when does the ending time really end? Is it the beginning of the minute that you name or the end, you know, or is it the end of the minute that you name? And here the iOS is telling us and resolving that argument that the ending time stays valid until the beginning of the next minute. Your exam is not going to get that granular, but it is nice to finally see that. So we've got periodic Tuesday, not 7 through 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And because that's what we've got the router already set up for. So now that we've got this time range, how do we apply it? What do we do? Well, it is at the very end of the access list command. And let's just say we wanted to prevent pings from coming in on our Ethernet interface like we did in the last lab, but we just want that to be stopped during this time. Uh, we, could use it for we could use it for just about anything, but let's just use it for ICMP right now. Let's go ahead and we'll put, let's go with 100, and we will deny. Actually, let's do something a little different there. TCP, any, any, any source, any destination, we don't care. And we're going to do the equals thing. And what are we going to pick? We're going to pick Telnet. That's a popular one to stop on the weekends or period. So we've got access list 100 and I TCP, any, any equal 23. And certainly this is a legal command by itself, but notice the time range option here near the bottom. This is where the time range is going to go on any ACL that, that we write. So we've got our time range there, and then it's going to ask you for the time range. And what I like to do always is just check it very quickly. It could save you a lot of aggravation. We did call it Tuesday night, I believe. Yes, we did. All caps. And we still have some options, but that's all we want to do. And we'll just permit everything else. So that's a great way to block just about anything for any certain time period, whether it's absolute, whether you're doing it one time from this town to this time, or you want to set it for certain days of the week, every week, or every day. You know, you could have Telnet access blocked from 6 p.m. till 6 a.m. every day with no problem at all. And you just run a show access list. And that's it. Now there's something else I wanted to show you here. Notice the word active at the end of this access list. That means that the access, that time range is active now. That's why I made it Tuesday night between 7 and 11 p.m. because that's actually when I'm recording this. So, you know, the router has the time on it and I wanted to make sure you saw one that was active. That doesn't mean that, um, well, actually, I apologize. It just simply means that it is being applied right now because of the active word and because you're in that time range. If you want to see the time range, I believe, yep, there it is. And show time range, great command, because it even shows you where you're using it. Time range entry Tuesday night that it's active. It is showing that. It's periodic. Here's the time. And where is it being used? It's being used in an ACL entry. And when the time runs out, we will no longer see active there. That is about it. So again, fantastic option for anything you want to block for certain periods of time, which is why I definitely wanted to show you that one on the live equipment. That is about it for access lists. Can you believe it? We've just got, I think, one more video to go. There's, a, there's something with sequence numbers that I want to show you because what used to be the bane of our existence as network admins is when you would write an ACL and say it was 20 lines and you realize, oh, I forgot one network here in the middle. Well, getting that line to the middle of the ACL without rewriting the entire thing wasn't always easy. 
So in the next video, we're going to take a look at ACL sequence numbers. We're going to work with those a little bit, and you can see how to add a line to an existing ACL that doesn't automatically go to the bottom. I'll see you on the next video, and we'll work with those.